What's going on guys? Seth here from Team Union Seth. Here as your coach of the Philadelphia Feroes for Season 1 of the Global Showdown League. So, this league I actually wasn't in originally going into the draft. Someone else was in the league and did the draft and then he dropped. And uh, another person I'm in another league with asked me if I would sub in and take over the team. So that is what I did. Uh, so they went through the whole draft, the team was picked, all the other teams were picked. Uh, but no games were played, so going into week one, uh, I was the coach and I had the team that was picked by someone else. So um, after week one, I was, I'm allowed to make a few transactions. I'm not sure if I will or not. Um, but let's just get into the team here. So like I said, I did not pick this team, uh, but I do think it's pretty decent and I am pretty interested in using it. So uh, just talking a little bit about a little bit about the GSL itself. Um, the draft formats, there were only eight teams, uh, it was a snake draft, I believe, I'm actually not sure what pick uh, the person who picked for us was, <coughs> uh, but it was a draft by tier, so the tiers are OU, UU, RU, and NU slash PU, so you drafted three mods from each tier, and you would draft a Z Crystal at the very end, so you had to have at least one Mega Pokemon, or you had to have one Mega Pokemon out of those 12 mods, uh, whatever tier you wanted, and then like I said, the Z Crystal, so... The first pick on the team uh, was Tapu Koko. So obviously Tapu Koko is one of the best mods in the format right now. It has a fantastic speed tier at 130. It has dual momentum so it gets Volt Switch and U-Turn. So it's Stab, Volt Switch, and then U-Turn if you don't want to get trapped. Uh, it gets boosted Stab from the Electric Terrain so its electric moves are boosted by itself. Uh, it, can run it can be run physical or special. So it has a good physical move pool and a good special move pool. Uh, it has 95 base special defense and one or special attack and 115 base attack, so it can be pretty versatile and run. It can run uh, offensive, special offensive, uh, mixed, whatever it wants, and it has pretty good coverage. It gets you know it gets a bunch of different things for coverage, uh, so it's pretty good, especially on both the physical and special side. It gets good coverage both ways. Um, its ability, Electric Terrain, right now its hidden ability, Telepathy, is not released yet. So it has Electric Terrain, but I'm not exactly sure why you would run Telepathy, especially in singles. So Electric Terrain is really good, like I said, it boosts its Electric Attack, so Volt Switch, Thunderbolt, Wild Charge, things like that, making it super strong. Some of the common moves you'll see on it, like I said, it has a, a decently diverse move pool. Brave Bird, Calm Mind, Dazzling Gleam, Defog, so it is a hazard removal uh, with Defog. Grass Knot, Iron Head, Nature's Madness, doing a good amount of damage. Uh, Roost, so it does have reliable recovery. Like I said, Thunderbolt, U-Turn, Volt Switch, and Wild Charge. So just some typical moves uh, you'll see on it throughout the matches. So next up, the second pick. I was really, really surprised when I saw this that it was the second pick, or that it was picked in the second round. And that is Hoopa Unbound. So this thing is a monster in league format. With its ginormous move pool and its massive stats, I can't believe it dropped in round two. Most leagues it's not even allowed, let alone taken in round two. So it has phenomenal attack and special attack. It has, like I said, an incredible move pool. It gets a lot of physical and special moves, uh, a ton of coverage. It's ridiculous in this format because you can prep differently each week. You can run a physical set one week, a special set the next week. Uh, you know, you can run bunch of different coverage, whatever you need for the team. Uh, it's just really, really good. And it does have a decent speed tier. So it's base 80. It's not super desirable, but it does make for a good scarfer. Um, and it can outspeed a lot of bulkier threats, a lot of walls as well, which is its main purpose. Hoopa Unbound is an incredible wall breaker, especially with its coverage. And then factoring in its huge stats, it makes it ridiculous. So its ability is Magician. So basically, if you don't have an item, your opponent does, you attack them and you take their item. Not super useful, but in certain situations it could be kind of cool. Some common moves you'll see on it. Uh, you know, on the physical side, you have brick, uh, brick break, drain punch, uh, fire punch, gunk shot, hyperspace fury, ice punch, knock off, thunder punch, and zen headbutt. And then on the special side, you have things like dark pulse, energy ball, grass knot, focus blast, uh, psychic, and then you have nasty plot and, and calm mind to boost your stats. And then it even gets trick room, so this thing can be possibly run on. Uh, a Trick Room variant as well, so which makes it pretty cool and versatile there. Next up, uh, he did pick our Mega for the team, um, and that is Mega Pinsir. So, Mega Pinsir is pretty good in the format. Uh, it does get set up in the Swords Dance. It has a pretty good speed tier at 105, so it does hit that uh, hit over that base 100. It gets stab priority, so it gets uh, aerial eight, as you guys will see in the next slide. It has aerial eight, so it gives it a boosted stab quick attack. 
and then it has some pretty powerful coverage. So it doesn't have a ton of coverage, but it gets things like I said, Quick Attack, it gets Return, Earthquake, Close Combat, Stone Edge. So it doesn't get a ton of coverage, but what it does get is very, very strong. Like I said, its ability is Aerial 8. Before it Mega Evolves, it does get some pretty good abilities in Hyper Cutter, Mold Breaker, and Moxie. Uh, most weeks you'll probably see me running Moxie. Uh, there might be some weeks where I want to want to run Mold Breaker with the Earthquake or something like that. And then Hyper Cutter just isn't super useful, but you know it, it could have its place. So some typical moves you'll see on it: uh, Close Combat, Double Edge for some super powerful Aerial 8 boosted moves, Earthquake, Facade if I think I'm gonna get status, Knock Off it does get, Quick Attack for that priority, Return, Stone Edge, Sword Stance, and X Scissor. So moving on, dropping down to UU, uh, the first pick for this team in UU was Stack Attack. Now, I was a little a little weirded out with this pick. Uh, I do like Stack Attack. I think it's a good mon. I'm not exactly sure why it was taken in the first round of UU. So, like I said, it is a good mon. Uh, it has really, really good physical stats, so attack and defense. Um, it's an excellent trick room user, especially at base 13 speed, which is literally nothing. And it can run, and it can be pretty versatile. It can run a defensive set, it can be an offensive set, um, and it has, you know, it has some coverage. It has decent coverage. So, you know, I, I was, I was a little, a little interested to see it take in the first round in UU, but I am actually pretty glad I get a chance to use this thing. So, its ability is Beast Boost. So, uh, its defense is its biggest, is its highest stat by far. But there is a set you can run where you do like a minus defense nature, cut down on some of the IVs, and you can get attack boost there, which you'll, you're definitely going to see throughout this season. Uh, some moves you'll typically see on an Earthquake, Gyro Ball, Iron Head, Rock Blast, Stone Edge, Super Power, uh, Zen Headbutt. It also gets, you know, like Substitute could potentially be an option. It does get Stealth Rock, so it is a Hazard Setter. And like I mentioned, Trick Room. It gets Trick Room, can set it up for itself, and then go ahead and sweep, especially with that Beast Boost ability. So moving on to our next pick, we have Arcanine. Now Arcanine is a pretty cool mon. It is pretty versatile. It can be run, you know, offensive, physical, or special. It can be run defensive. It has Intimidate. So it's got some really good, uh, really good ways to use it. It has a good speed tier at 95, so not quite that base 100, but still pretty fast. Um, like I said, like I uh, said before, it does have pretty balanced stats. So it can run, you know, physical or special. It gets good coverage on both sides. It does give us a fire immunity, so it does get flash fire if we don't want to run Intimidate every week, and it gets reliable recovery in Morning Sun. Like I said, for its abilities, it gets the Intimidate, dropping our opponent's attack by one stage, flash fire giving us that fire immunity, and justified if I want to run that for some reason, uh, boost its attack by one if it gets hit by a dark type move. So some items, or I'm so, sorry, not items, some moves you'll see on it, commonly close combat, crunch, extreme speed, so it does get some awesome priority in extreme speed, fire blast, flare blitz for that stab fire coverage, iron head, morning sun, roar, so it can be a phaser, substitute, toxic, wild charge, and will o wisp So very good utility in this mod and can be uh, somewhat of an offensive threat if I choose to run it that way. Next up we have Seismitoad. So our last UU pick was Seismitoad. What's really cool about Seismitoad, it only has one weakness in grass. It is a quad weakness, but it's only that one weakness. Uh, it gives us an electric immunity, so it's immune to electric, mu electric moves. Uh, it gets stealth rocks. It does get rocks. It has good bulk on both sides. It has a really good HP stat, and then its defense and special defense are pretty decent. And it does have a diverse move pool, so it gets a bunch of different coverage moves, which is really, really cool. Moving on to its abilities, it gets Swift Swim, so if we do end up going up against a rain team, we can take advantage of that, uh, or just run Rain Dance ourselves. It gets Poison Touch, which can be pretty cool for wearing down some bulkier teams, and Water Absorb, which is probably what you're going to see most, being giving us that immunity to water. So it could potentially give us an Electric Immunity and a Water Immunity, which is really, really nice. Some common moves we have, like I said, it gets pretty good coverage, Drain Punch, Earth Power, Earthquake, Focus Blast, Grass Knot, Hydro Pump, Ice Punch, Knock Off, Poison Jab, Power Up Punch, Refresh, which can be pretty cool, uh, healing itself of status, Rock Slide, Scald, Fishing for some Burns, Sludge Bomb, potentially poison our, our opponents, does get the Stealth Rock like I had mentioned, and obviously Toxic. So moving down to the RU tier, our first pick in RU was the Rotom Mo. Now Rotom Mo isn't like a super, super sought after mon uh, in tier 3 or in RU, whatever you want to, or whatever your draft is. It's not a super sought after mon, so I was a little surprised to see it go uh, round 1 here. But it does give us a ground immunity. It does give us a ground immunity. It has a decent speed tier at 86. So it's pretty cool. It can outspeed those base 85s um, or base 80s as well. 
So it gives us pretty cool there, which also does make it a good Scarfer. Uh, it does give us Hazard Removal, so it gets Defog, which is super, super important. Getting more Hazard Removal is always a good thing, and it gives us momentum in the Volt Switch. So, this ability is Levitate. Uh, it's the only ability it gets, uh, as all the Rotom forms do. Common moves you'll see, uh, it doesn't have a ton of coverage. It gets Dark Pulse, you know, T-Ball, Sucker Punch, uh, Volt Switch. Uh, it does get Leaf Storm, which isn't on here, but it has the Leaf Storm. Um, it can also run some cool utilities, so Defog, Light Screen, Reflect, so it gets dual screens, Pain Split for some recovery, Thunder Wave, Trick, Toxic, so you can run like a trick, like a uh, Scarf Trick set. It gets Will-O-Wisp, which is really, really good for wearing down some, phys uh, some physical threats. So overall, it can be a, it's a very versatile mod, it can be very, very good uh, with our team. Next up, we have the Swellow. So what's really good about Swellow is it's super fast and it can run physical or special. So, has a great speed tier at 125, which is awesome. Powerful stab attack, so it has things like double edge and return uh, for its normal stab, and then brave bird for its uh, flying stab. It also gets boom burst and hurricane for on the special side. So, stab priority, so it gets quick attack, uh, gets that stab quick attack, which is awesome. And then it gives us another hazard removal with defog, another hazard remover uh, with the defog. So you're probably not going to see a whole lot of, or many weeks where I run defog on this thing, but it is an option in case I need it there just in case. Uh, or maybe if I don't, you know, there's not another fourth move I need, I can throw defog on there just in case I want to use that. Moving on to its abilities, uh, it gets guts and scrappy. So two really cool abilities, I want to run it physical. Uh, with like a flame orb or just in case I get status that is there and then scrappy if I want to be hitting ghost types That could be really cool as well Some standard move options. It does get like I said the boom burst brave bird defog double edge could be cool facade even uh, with the gut set heat wave is really good for steel types um, Hurricane it gets pursuit which is actually pretty cool quick attack and return roost for some recovery Tailwind giving us a little bit of extra speed or supporting the team U-turn for momentum, which is great, and then Whirlwind could potentially be doing some phasing if I decide I want to run some sort of weird, bulky Swellow set. Could run, like, Whirlwind, Roost, Defog, and uh, Boom Burst or something like that. So, pretty cool stuff it could run. Moving on for our last RU pick is Milotic. Now, this thing is a super solid Mon, especially for the third round in RU. It's really, really, really nice to have. So it has great bulk. It's excellent on the special side. It has very, very good HP and can even be potentially run physically defensive, which is really cool. Gets reliable recovery in Recover, which is great, especially for a wall. And it does have excellent special attack at, I'm pretty sure it's base 125. So this thing has good special attack uh, in order to fire back some pretty hard hits or potentially even be run uh, uh, offensively one. Its abilities consist of Marvel Scale, Competitive, and Cute Charm. You're never really going to see cute charm on this thing. Marvel scale boosting its defense if it is status. So if I want to run like a flame orb set, defensive flame orb, something like that. Or like I said, we have a competitive set which boosts your special attack if other stats are down. So if they, if my opponent has an intimidate user, they drop my attack by one, my special attack would go up by two. So super cool abilities that can really, really come in handy depending on the matchup. Common moves you will see. Dragon Tail and Haze are staples on my Lodic just because of uh, phasing out and getting rid of setup on my opponent's team. Hydro Pump and Ice Beam are really good options. Light Screen, like I said, it gets Recover. Refresh, so healing itself of status if necessary. Uh, rest and Sleep Talk for a potential Rest Talk set. Scald, helping us to get some burns. Substitute and Toxic could also be options. Moving on to the NU tier, we have Hitmontop. Again, I feel like the first round in NU is a little early to get him on top, but it's still a pretty cool mod. It has good bulk, so it has, you know, overall pretty good bulk. It gives us hazard removal, so it does give us a rapid spinner, which is something this team was lacking up to this point. So getting a rapid spinner is really, really nice. And it gets stab priority as well as a bunch of other priorities. So it does have the mock punch and also gets things like bullet punch and sucker punch. So really cool to have there. Its abilities intimidate, technician, and steadfast. Honestly, any of these abilities could be used. Steadfast, not really as much as the others, but Intimidate is great for running this thing a little bit more bulky and for just weakening uh, my opponent's stats in general. And then Technician, boosting those priority moves, boosting those lower base power moves could be really helpful in certain situations. Some moves it does get. Uh, bulk up, so it can set up a little bit. Uh, it gets Fake Out, which is pretty cool for priority and to make, you know, to make our opponent flinch. Bullet Punch for priority. Uh, like I said, Sucker Punch, Mock Punch. 
It gets close combat, earthquake, high jump kick, pursuit, which is pretty cool, stone edge, like I mentioned before, rapid spin to get rid of those hazards, and the toxic is also pretty common. Next up in the NU tier, we had Weezing, which is a super, super valuable pick in the NU tier. Weezing is a great physically defensive mod. It's an excellent physically defensive mod, and it gets some decent coverage in order to fire back as well. Gives us another ground immunity, which really helps out our Tapu Koko. Um, it only has one weakness in Psychic because of that ground immunity, and it gives us Toxic Spikes, so it gives us more hazards to help wear down other teams, which is really good for things like the Mega Pinsir and the Stack Attacka in order to sweep late game. Its ability is Levitate, so that's its only ability, but it's a really, really good ability. So we do have a few Levitate users on this team, but like I said, that's really good for the Tapu Koko to help us, uh, to help us sweep, or just to help us have Koko put in a ton of work. Standard moves you will see, Clear Smog is pretty cool for a defensive set to stop setup. It gets Dark Pulse and Fire Blast, uh, Sludge Bomb, Thunderbolt for some coverage moves. It gets Haze to help clear some status. Explosion if I want to run that for like a last ditch effort thing. Gets some cool tech in Memento, Pain Split, Taunt, uh, and Will-O-Wisp. And like I had mentioned before, it gets those Toxic Spikes to help get us some more hazard support. Lastly, our final pick in the draft was Frostlass. Now, what's cool about Frostless is it's very, very fast. I believe it's base 110, and it gives us a Spikes user. So it gives us a Spikes user as well as a Spin Blocker. So this thing is still pretty decent. It's pretty cool. Like I said, it's fast, and it can you know, be like a lead Sash set and get up Spikes, maybe even prevent a Rapid Spin at some point. So it can be useful in some certain matchups. Uh, it gets Snow Cloak and Curse Body. Snow Cloak isn't going to be too useful. I don't really think we're going to be up against Hail, but Curse Body can potentially... Uh, can potentially disable our opponent's moves, which could be helpful uh, in the long run, or just to get up more hazards, things like that. Some common moves you'll see on it. So like I said, it's typically run as a lead sash set, so you'll see things like Taunt, Spikes, Destiny Bond, Ice Beam. Uh, it could be run with screens, so it gets Light Screen. Uh, pain Slip potentially for recovery. Get some decent coverage in the Psychic, Shadow Ball, Signal Beam, and Thunderbolt. Uh, could also run Thunder Wave, Toxic, Will-O-Wisp, so it gets a lot of status there. And potentially could run Trick if I want to run like a Specs or a Scarf set or something like that. So the last round to pick was our Z-Crystal round. So we ended up picking up the Electrium Z, which is really, really good for our team. Uh, it's versatile among a lot of our mods. A lot of our mods get electric coverage. So our only stab electric mod is the Tapu Koko, which is awesome. Uh, Electrium Z on top of Coco is really, really nice, but we do have a lot of mods that get electric coverage that could potentially take advantage of the Z Crystal as well. It also is boosted by the electric terrain. So if I go for a Z Thunderbolt with Tapu Coco in the electric terrain, oh my god, that's going to do so much damage. It's ridiculous. So I'm really excited for the Electrium Z and Tapu Coco to put in some work. And then, like I said, we could catch someone off guard with some. Uh, with a, you know, a Z electric move from one of our other mods that does get coverage, even like wheezing with Thunderbolt or you know something like that could be pretty cool and a, and a cool weird tech. So that is the team. Uh, just to recap, go over it again. We have the Tapu Koko, Hoopa Unbound, and the Mega Pinsir for our OU picks. Our UU picks were the Stack Attacka, Arcanine, and Seismitoad. From RU, we picked up the Rotom Mo, Swellow, and Milotic. And in NU, we got the Hitmontop, Weezing, and Frostlass. And then to go along with all that, we have the Electrium Z. So that is going to be it for this one, guys. Let me know what you think of the team. Do you think we inherited a good team, a bad team? Uh, what are some transactions that are things you would change about the team to make it better? Uh, you know, just general suggestions, maybe not necessarily specific mods, because there are some that are obviously taken. But let me know what you think would benefit this team, what you think of the team in general. Uh, but other than that, thank you guys for watching. Don't forget to leave a like and comment, like I said, and subscribe. So I will see you guys in the next one. Thanks for watching.